important. So sit up straight and tall while I close my nightshade a little bit so you don't have to look at this big bright spot on my, although I'm highlighting. If you're looking for a garb from Mind Body Solutions for the holidays for those people you don't know how to buy for, Bethany will put in a link into, into our, to our store. All right, so I'm gonna sit up straight and tall. <clears throat> Some people do things like they're practice something or to someone, I don't know, do how, whatever it is that makes you feel a little bit more connected before you start practicing, right? So start to allow, you know, that I think that there's an important energy that I think when you live with a disability or an altered mind body relationship that because those of us that have a little bit more struggle have had to learn a level of patience and acceptance that that people that are more traditional bodied um, don't have to. I think that's a benefit in yoga, right? So sit and that patience that you've maybe developed over the years of dealing and living with whatever you're living with, maybe it's your whole life. Let it in. That's one of the doorways to having more of yourself. So I'm taking time here, although I'm speaking to soften my organs of perception on my temples, my jaw, the inside of my mouth, although I'm talking, so it's not as effective. Right? But I'm also making sure because I'm speaking but even so, learning to relax my belly, to relax my throat. So right away, as soon as I do that, I wanna close my eyes because it's so much more inward. So when you're having to teach, you just get to get a little, you touch up and then you have to start teaching again. But you can just sit here and feel for a second and not be in a rush and be in that state before you try or try too hard. Feeling the air on your skin, feeling connected to what's around you. All these things that are easy to in, easier to integrate if you're honoring and being grateful. It's gratitude week, right? At least in the United States. So start to feel asana more. Ground your feet on the floor, on your foot pedals. Feel your sitting bones start to rise up. So you're going down and you're rising, especially through your spine. Because once it starts to happen through your spine, that'll reorganize your limbs a little bit. So lift under the carbons now. Broaden, so you're going down and up, but now broaden. Crunch the front and the back ribs. And as you do, be more aware of your heels. Be part of something because you are. Just by being here, you're part of something. Add a little bit more of your action. So hitting down a little bit more with your sitting bones, rising up through the very low abdomen, lifting the chest, broadening at the side armpit chest, feeling more full, expressive from inside to out.
Let go of your day. Prepare your mind to do yoga. Good, and then release. Take your sternum up towards your chin, your chin down and over your sternum. All right, so this action. Feel your rib cage more. I can feel my right side of my rib cage more than my left. Dang it, it's okay. Just have to let my breath touch the left side of my rib cage more. For me, it means breathe more in through my left nostril. Raise your head up with closed eyes. Open your eyes. One of the things, you know, there's so many, one of the reasons why I love yoga is that when I, when I practice asana, I can actually simplify. Even though the asana is complicated, it's, it's a simple thing to start to feel more directly what's happening in your own mind body relationship. You know, like when you think about this as gratitude week or being grateful week, but it's, there's so many paradoxes about being a human being, right? Even if you're in the United States, you know, this Thanksgiving is based on some crazy thing that happened, you know, something around the first of meal back when Christopher Columbus was going on. And we are, no, historically, that's all false. And it was actually, not a good thing that happened, right? And so one of the things that I like, you know, when that when that when that invasion started to happen to this to this to this actual land, and so one one of the things that I don't want my appreciation to be predicated on my beliefs or things that I've been told historically since I was a kid that aren't necessarily true, right? That we now know are just part of the mythology we all inherit, right? but my appreciation, I want to be more fundamental, right? Like, like here, and that's part one of the reasons why I practice yoga is I want to honor what it is to have a body, what it is to feel and experience in a way that's not predicated on what I believe, right? That it's actually a direct experience. And so, so like, that's part of when I say, I want to clarify and do something to purify before I start practicing yoga. It's all trying to honor the fact that it's not easy going inward, right? That's why asana is taught from outside to in usually. It's taught from action, enough repetition, and your mind starts to allow yourself to go inward. But, but one of the advantages that we have as adaptive students is we're more adept at having to move from inside to out. But the inside dimension is harder to get to, it's not as tangible, right? And so you have to do some things to quiet your mind down. So just on these next few breaths, I wanna get this idea, just a simple idea, before we start moving our limbs more, right? Of how the inhalation expands and the exhalation extends, <clears throat> right? So, so just, especially on the exhalation, I want you to hit down through your sitting bones and stretch out to the top of your head. So you're trying to make yourself congruent with this extension. So, so inhale, feel the expansion. Exhale, sitting bones down, top of the head up. So this should be raising your chest up. But notice that the inhalation also has a horizontal component, right? So the in, so you're watching the inhalation go like this, including up and down, but it's got this horizontal component. And then on the exhalation, it comes back like this. And I want you to take that energy of it deflating and lengthen with it, right? So you're getting this constant interplay between an expansion in every direction Right? And a, one of the 
the things that I have been thinking about a lot, I think I've said it in the last few weeks, is that one, way, one time I read a description that you take in and appreciate what is or the divine, you want to say, on the inhalation. No, you, you, you actually take it in. On the pause, you appreciate it. And on the exhalation, you, you exhale into service, right? So this idea of, of the exhalation, you take the expansion, you know, appreciate what's happening. And then on the exhalation, you go like this, you, you, you extend and move through gravity in action. Because in most poses, you're moving through gravity and against gravitation. So feel the inhalation and the expansion. Exhale and extend. So keep that simple dynamic, right? So it may look like you're deflating, but you're actually getting, you're moving into the world on exhalation, right? being more of service. So again, breathe, feel the expansion, and then exhale into length. So now I want you to do again, we do a very subtle movement. I want you to do the same thing, but when you exhale, I want you to come stay focused now. I want you to exhale and come slightly forward on your sitting bones. So you start to bring this expansion into a change of gravity on exhalation. But now on that exhalation, often when you come forward, you drop your chest, right? Right, you don't pay attention. You just kind of lean forward and drop your chest. I want you to take the inhalation on the exhalation. I want you to be extending through your spine, keeping your chest lifted as you come forward. Right, we're doing it in a real simple movement now, right? And you start to realize that it's not so simple. So you inhale, you feel the expansion, you exhale, and that lengthening energy translates into lifting your chest as you come forward. Now notice when you keep this lengthening on exhalation, your shoulder blades go slightly down. But I want you to go down and spread them. So inhale and feel the expansion like this, Exhale, come forward. Inhale, come back. Let your exhalation be here. Inhale again, expand. Exhale, come forward, keep the chest lifted. Keep your sitting bones down. Come back up on inhalation. Exhale and lengthen your spine, down and up. And then again, take, feel the, ex exhale down, keep your chest lifted, extend on the exhalation so you're feeling your sitting bones and your feet, right? Inhale, come back up. Use your expansion to help you come back against, up against gravity and then exhale and lengthen your spine. So I'm going through what seems really simple. It's hard to keep doing this at this level when you start adding more complexity to the poses, right? So again, inhale, exhale, keep the extension as you come down, feel your feet, be more aware of your whole body. Take a breath here, feel the expansion, and the extension here. And then on the next inhalation, push up and come back up. Exhale, extend. Inhale, come forward. Keep the extension on the exhalation. Take a breath here. Let the exhale come out in a lengthening of your spine, hitting down through your sitting bones, being aware of your feet. Inhale, come back up. Exhale and lengthen your spine as you settle back into your sitting bones. 
and then off to the left, off to the right. And now we're just moving. We're not being so focused. Off to the, just like get that sense of like not living in your chair, but on your chair, right? As if it's just temporary. That's one of the things that, and then come on back to center. There's so many paradoxical things. Like when I was first injured, wheelchairs weighed 42 years ago, wheelchairs weighed 45 to 50 pounds. Now they weigh like 25. But then for those last few years, they tried to get me last, like, you know, starting off about 30 years ago, they tried to get that you like getting to where you're, you kind of fit into your wheelchair. Like it becomes an extension of your body, right? Like I kind of come in, I'm becoming a rocket and being coming as if my legs aren't my legs anymore. My wheels are my legs and I'm ready to, right? And that's something I don't want to do, right? I'll do it when I, when I need to, but I want to live, know that, God, by the way, I get all around on my wheelchair vehicle and it's not my body right and I, I appreciate it but I'm separate from it right and to me being able to do both is an important thing so again over to the right over to the left up if you can but get more weight up your sitting bones so let there be a little bit of a hang so even if you can't come off your up up off your chair seat even getting some length so there's less weight happening. So you get this feel of, of, of some hanging length in your very low abdomen, right? And then if you can get up, jiggle a little bit. So you start to feel where your sitting bones are in relationship to the chair, right? Because without space, you don't have freedom, right? People think it's all about external freedom. Right, it's about being able to have the freedom on the inside, the space on the inside. So again, like feel that length and get that and then release and then come over to the right. Using that length, come over to the left, feeling that length between your sitting bones and your low abdomen that goes up through your chest. Oh my goodness, what happens if I inhale when I start to feel that? And what happens then if I exhale and I extend even longer? Drop my shoulder. And now I'm taking that lighter space, right? And then going the other way. And I'm inhaling and expanding my very low abdomen and my chest. And then on an extension, I'm lengthening. Right, so I'm letting there be more space in my lower abdomen, right? Space in your lower abdomen is precious, right? So I'm gonna lift back up again. Mm-hmm. So now when I settle by myself, how I settle, so I lift up, I plunk down, right? I just compressed everything. Don't do that, right? Right? Use as you start to realize space with your breath and with your movement, don't throw it away. Keep it as an imprint. So I got to undo what I just did when I plop myself back down with like a sack of potatoes, right? So I'm gonna set myself back down, trying to keep the length in my lower abdomen. And then when I do inhale and let that be the beginning of my expansion and then exhale and lengthen into more discipline. Again, I'm gonna lift up, feel the space, set myself back down lightly, let that space be imprinted as I inhale, and then exhale and extend up through the top of my head and down through my sitting bones. So I'm getting this feeling of being more bouncier, right? Do it again on your own. Think about wanting to stay bouncy in your body, not just compressed and heavy, which is one of the things that disability can do, can make your mind get heavy, right? So I'm just taking a few breaths and making sure I, I keep that sense of space in my whole body. So now maybe my inhalation can get a little lighter 
and more buoyant, even as it gets to be more. And then on exhalation, I'm lengthening and giving back to the world on exhalation. You take from the world on inhalation and you give it back on exhalation. You actually convert it too, to carbon dioxide. Thank, good the, thank goodness the plants breathe that in and change it back to oxygen, right? It's an amazing symbiosis. And we're dumb enough not to see how important trees and plants are. It's unbelievable. We're not here without them. Be grateful. We need the whole lung, the whole earth is a lung, right? It's converting and there's a cycle that's going on, right? And we, it's like, we're not here without all of that. Inhale, take your arm up, left arm up. Exhale, bring it down forward. Growl on the shoulder blade. Inhale, take your arms up, hit down through your sitting bones and down through your heels. Inhale, extend and lengthen from that sense of lightness. Drop your shoulder blade to stay grounded. Hit down through your, your, shit, your sitting bones and extend up from that lightness. Inhale, exhale, down. And then inhale the other arm up. We'll go to here first. Ground it. As you ground, don't lose the sense of space in the lower abdomen. And then inhale again and take it up. Extend and feel that space. Exhale to here. Inhale again. Let the inhalation make you stronger. Exhale, extend. Ground down through the shoulder blade, down through the sitting bones. Mm -hmm. And then inhale it back. And then exhale it back down. And then drop it. Add the symmetry again, because we just went from side to side, right? So now for me, now everyone's disability gets exposed in different ways. Like for me to take both arms up, I go off balance. That's why I just taught it with one arm, right? Because I'm paralyzed from here down. If you can inhale and take both arms up, I actually can't do that. No, just straight out in front of you. I can if I really grip and twist my spine. Right, so be like this, to which I can't even support. Unless I hold my hands like this, but then go from there, hit down through your sitting bones and take your arms up. And then exhale and back down. So I have to do one arm at a time, which means I'm gonna teach both sides and you have to do it twice if you did it with both arms. On up. And then again, all the way up. Exhale back down. So can you, when both arms are out, can you notice your spine's compressing when it's out like this? And then back down, right? So you can do both arms at the same time. Lift back up and get that space again in your spine, right? And then I'm going to lean back in my chair because I'm going to try to do both arms for a little bit. So I have to change my balance point for my body to do this. Right away, just straight out in front of me, right away I can feel my spine's compressing. Oh my God. So I'm going to now from this position, I'm going to take my right arm down and my left arm up. Mm -hmm. So something's going down, something's going up. I'm grounding my sitting bones and stretching down through my heels, right? and then back, and then the left arm down, and the right arm up. And then back to this place that I hate, maybe you don't hate as much, and then back down. Because I know as soon as I go like this with my body, I'm not doing yoga anymore. I'm like holding up life, right? <clears throat> so that's why I choose to come down and put my hands on my legs because then I can actually get set and appreciate what's happening better. So if you can do it from here and want to get more of an abdominal up, going up and down, 
or you can keep like I'm gonna, cause I want it to be more yoga. I'm gonna keep one hip, one, the heel of my hands on my knees. So I'm, right? And so I'm gonna inhale and take one arm up, but I wanna keep that lightness and length in the lower abdomen. On my inhalation, I wanna reach down to my feet with my inhalation, fill the vessel down to my feet and then exhale and extend out through my arms and extend out through my legs. Inhale again, feeling the expansion, directing it in a straight line, exhaling even farther beyond my fingertips and down through the floor. And then I'm gonna be here for a second because if I want to appreciate the universe, I need to be grounded and I need to be on balance and I need to be settled because this movement is an expression that describes the world. That's actually a line from David Byrne. She moves to describe the world, right? And so inhale, take your right arm, feel in and expand. So you get this expansion keeping the abdominal length, exhale, extend out through each arm, inhale again and replenish, exhale, lengthen your spine and move out through both arms and through both legs. Good, and then exhale back down and be centered again. So this idea that you inhale and you expand, you exhale and extend, but then the inhalations are replenishing. It literally is a replenishing of the oxygen in your bloodstream. Like it's literal, right? And it's feeding your muscles. So your inhalation is replenishing. And what are you gonna do with your breath? What are you gonna do with that oxygen? You're gonna convert it to movement, right? Our bodies can take energy whether it's from our diet, from whatever, and move it and convert it to movement, right? Which is a, a stunning thing, right? I, 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 I listened to um, this book, oh my God, I'm forgetting, Sapiens. And, and one of the ideas was he couldn't believe that it took so long for human beings to figure out the steam engine because all steam does is take heat and it's a movement. Right, you take the flame, the water, the water starts to boil, the actual steam starts to move the, the lid on the pot. And that was a huge breakthrough for human being when we realized that heat could be converted to movement. Well, guess what? We do it every single breath, every single day. We convert energy to movement, right? And it's stunning, all right? So again, both hands like this, Feel the ground, honor it. Your sitting bones, your feet, the lifted chest, the discipline through your arms, honor it. And then inhale, feel the expansion and take the arm up, stretching out through the arm, down through the sitting bones, down through the inner groin, down to the heels. Exhale and extend even farther. Be of more service and more action on the inhalation, re on the exhalation, replenish on the inhalation. Feel the expansion again, feel the lightness in your low abdomen. And then exhale and extend with more discipline and more awareness into this space. And repeat, inhale from the spine, feel the whole body, replenish the whole body. Exhale, extend. And then inhale and on exhalation, bring the arm down. And again, you can do the movements and not pay too much attention to your breath. Don't get lost in the actual breathing part, right? So again, I'm gonna stay centered now. And I can feel that I just worked one arm more than the other. So I have to sit there and go, oh, I better work the other side. So I'm gonna inhale and take the right arm up. Feel the lightness breathe through the lightness that grounds my feet, grounds my sitting bones. Feel the expansion and then 
extend even farther into the pose on exhalation, replenish again. So if that just means if you don't want to focus on your breath, just allow in again. Don't pay attention to your breath, but allow in again. And then exhale and extend. And then inhale and exhale back down. Come forward again. Because remember now, but now you know, well, before you come forward, lift, lift up. I want you to feel that space and remind your brain of that space. Land back down, keep that lightness and come forward, right? Be forward and length broaden across your sacrum, broaden across your, your, your um, each heel. Feel the expansion and the replenishing on the inhalation and the extension on the exhalation. Go back and forth between replenishing and being of service into action because you get, you convert energy and your body keeps it warm. It's stunning when you actually think about it. You keep the universe warm with your life. Good, and then come on back up, be in the center. And now, so we're gonna wanna inhale and use all this length, right? And inhale up, exhale, we're gonna add a twist. So you're gonna go over to the side here. I'm gonna ground, I'm gonna take a breath here before I find where my other arm is supposed to go. So I'm just gonna like be safe here, be balanced and watch my breath for a second. Find my spine, lengthen it on exhalation. Then I'm gonna bring my arm around and find where I'm gonna do the most secure, grounded twist I can. But I'm not, I'm not gonna hurry into the twist. I'm just gonna breathe here for a second because I wanna replenish. And with my inhalation, I wanna honor. I wanna take in pause a little bit and then exhale into more length. And as I do, I'm gonna add the complexity of twisting on the exhalation. So inhale, I'm replenishing, filling the vessel. Exhaling, I'm turning and extending into action. And I just added an extra complexity for my spine. Good, and then come on back to the center. Be in the center. Feel it. So the thing is when you're doing chair poses, like the extra complexity that's introduced by twists are very dynamic, right? It, twists are, so twists are more, they're more intuitive, they're more felt than like forward bends. Right? In standing poses. So I'm just gonna sit here for a second and then I'm gonna know I want my lightness, I want my grounding, I wanna inhale and take my arm up. I'm gonna exhale and stay here. I'm gonna inhale again, replenish, and then exhale and bring it down. I'm gonna like take a breath here. I'm not gonna be in a rush. I wanna honor what's happening, right? So I'm gonna inhale again and feel the expansion and then exhale and extend my spine. So I'm already twisting now. Now I'm in the next, I'm gonna figure out where I want my arm to be, how far I wanna to twist to this time, right? And then inhale, fill the vessel, replenish and exhale and start to turn the spine. But I don't want you just to turn, I want you to lengthen and turn. So find that abdominal space that goes down through the sitting bones up through the chest, feel that length, let the replenishing feed that length and then exhale and extend it and twist at the same time. So you're going back and forth. Good, and then come on back to center. Be in the center. Mm -hmm. And then if you're just staying with your chair, come forward and lengthen. I'm gonna put my hands on the table. 
because I want to get my back more even. All right. And again, I'm practicing. So even when I'm coming forward, even when I'm forward, I want to stay light in my lower abdomen and have space in my lower abdomen and have, connect that to my chest. So even when I'm forward, I'm not losing that space, right? Which is one of the keys to forward bends, by the way, right? So what happens in forward bends is, is that is that people get so worried about how far they come down. So I'm just showing you right now, you don't have to do it. How far they come down and they collapse onto this space. They actually shut down the space where the torso is hitting the legs, right? They, they forget to stay long. So Bikis Angar in Angar Yoga, it really overemphasizes, not overemphasis, but emphasizes the lift of the sternum as you come down, right? Which we were already doing with breath, right? The lift of the sternum to keep that space as you come down, right? So whatever position you're in, I want us to try to do more of a forward bend. You know, if you're doing a full forward bend, your legs would be out straight, right? But it's okay if they're not, right? So you're feeling this length, this lift, and you're coming forward. And then you look down. So if I'm not doing it on my wheelchair, on the table, and I'm just doing it on my knees, I want my head down. But I don't want to have collapsed this space right here, right? So sit back up. So I'm, you know, my brain habituates things like space, right? Everyone's brain does because it doesn't think it's relevant. So I'm going to re, re remind myself about space in my lower abdomen by lifting up, lift up, hang a little bit, keep this length here, keep it even as you set your sitting bones. And then as soon as then start coming forward, lifting your chest, hitting the sitting bones down. Right. And that's why I tell you to broaden across your sacrum, because when you broaden across your very low back or tailbone, right, you actually have to keep that length in your lower abdomen, very low abdomen. That's what I want you to do in a forward bend and then come down a little bit farther and start to look down. Right. So so you're not taking in all the sunlight, you're going more inward in a forward bend, but you're maintaining the sense of space. So your inhalation now can actually touch that sense of space in your lower abdomen and lifting your chest. And then you exhale and you extend your spine as you come down farther into the pose, whatever that means for you. So I've got my hands on a table. I could have my hands like this. When, when my back is more extended, when I can use a table for your home practice, you'll get a better forward bend. All right, so, so know that I'm, this is what I do when I don't have a table and I'm not, I'm in a class. This is what I do when I want to actually have the pose for myself at maximum capacity, right? So I'm, I'm like, again, replenishing on the inhalation, breathing into the sense of space in my body, even though I'm in a position that's compressing, and then exhaling into length. So the space transitions into length, down through my sitting bones and up through my chest. And I repeat the process on inhalation and exhalation. And even if you can't get very far in the pose, believe that what you do matters here, how well you do it. Honor your own practice. Good, and then come on back up. Let in, lift your eyes up a little bit. Take in more light again, right? So you take in more light. Like one of the things, if you're blue and have you feeling blue that, that day, like, you know, when you, if you look up more when you're feeling a little bit down, you'll take in more light into your brain. It actually helps. It, it would help to go outside and have more natural light if you're feeling down, right? Don't forget we're simple creatures while at the same time being really complex. It's both true. So this, this, remember I taught a class a couple of weeks ago about the balance between inside and out. So now I'm letting the, the light in 
the space in, right? And I'm gonna feel the length on inhalation again, the, the expansion and the extension on exhalation. And I'm gonna come down again. I'm gonna inhale, move through gravity, come down, take my head down, take in less light, but try to keep that sense of space because you need both the sunlight. I mean, think about it. We sleep in the dark because we don't always want to have our brain turned on, right? So, or most of us sleep in the dark, right? Or some semblance of dark. So this idea of being able to withdraw and go inward really matters. And, and your breath has to learn how to support the inward energy as much as the outward energy, right? So you're down, your head's down, your spine is lengthened, but you're breathing into the, that more of a sense of inward. Maybe your eyes are closed and you're like, your, your spine is extended because we know that matters. You're grounded, but you're breathing into a more inward space and then open your eyes, push up and watch the transition back to outward space, let in more light. So I'm looking up a little bit. I'm letting the light and my breath more merge. Then I want you to go back up and over the back of the chair don't strain now because you've just been inward, right? But you're now following. Now with the center of your chest, you're following the opening upward. But the inward part, the awareness of your sitting bones and your feet need to stay here. Even in a back bend, you have the inward dimension that's more revealed in a forward bend. And then exhale back into neutral and be grateful for neutral, right? So we're gonna go through that cycle again where we go more inward, come back out, go outward, go up with the center of the chest and then back to neutral. Because more so than the physical asana matters, these transitions of your senses between inside and out are actually what keeps you more vital, right? So. I'm going to take a couple of breaths here. Now I want this length to be part. So I'm going to lift up again, set myself back down, keep that space. Cause my brain forgot. I did that cause my brain forgot about it. That's why I had you do it. Cause I forgot about it. Right. I'm going to inhale, take the vessel in, fill the vessel, replenish, exhale, come forward, keeping things long. The extension on exhalation is still happening. The replenishing on inhalation. So as you inhale, also broaden across your sacrum. Exhale, lengthen your spine. And then come down a little farther. Start to go more inward, but keep the length and the separation between the top of your thighs and your abdomen. Keep those two senses, sensations distinct in your brain. Close your eyes, start breathing for inward but feel the expansion on the inhalation and the extension on the exhalation. So you're starting to breathe into a different aspect where you have less overt sense experience coming in through your eyes and your sense of the whole room is changed because you're forward and in smaller space, but stay vital in there. Replenish on the inhalation, extend on the exhalation, stay frosty, stay alert. And then start to open your eyes, start to let the light in, start to rise up, come up again, go slow now because that kind of inward travel has to go slow into the outward travel. Honor everything and then go back and over. And now you're trying to let in the light. You're trying to have this open, not just your eyes open, but imagine their eyes in the center of your chest and it's taking in light too. And maybe you take your head back, maybe you don't depending on how your neck feels. 
and you're just watching and being grateful for the expansion out. Take a breath. And then exhale back into neutral. Be in neutral. Thank goodness for neutral. Where I just get to have what I've earned. You've earned a lot in your life. A lot of good things you've earned. It's not just punishment we earn, by the way. Someone else told us about that. Like you're not worthy, that comes from the outside. That's just not true. The universe never thinks you're not worthy. Ever. Your relationship between you and the universe around you is too intimate for that. There is no judgment there. There just is what's happening. So take a couple of breaths. Then on this next one, lengthen, rise up and come forward again, lengthening, extending your spine down, come more to the forward bend again, taking time in the forward bend. Sometimes this is exactly what you need to do when you've been agitated in your day. You need to come forward, look at the ground, be in less space and find your strength. Let your breath replenish you, your inhalation. Your exhalation start to translate into, into service. Back and forth. And then come back up slowly, lengthening the whole time. Inhale. Back up over your chair. Open again. Taking a couple of breaths, replenishing, but keeping the inward energy with you as you're opening more on the outside. And then exhaling back into neutral and be in the neutral. So I want you to come forward and we just want to add a little bit of more because we have to go for the rest of our week. I want you to come forward and take your left arm outside your right leg. I want this to be super gentle now, right? I don't want you to crank here. There is no winning here. There's just adding another energy to your spine because you got the rest, the rest of your week, right? So now I'm just sitting here and starting to twist a little bit, but I'm just keeping the inward part and the, ex, the outward part as I twist a little bit. So you've got this, this interesting combination of inward and outward in a twist, right? And so you're like fight, watching both energies as you don't over crank it, because if you over crank it, it's gonna get violent. We don't want that at the end of class. And then come back in the center and be in the center. Now, if I were to not go the other direction, I would like feel odd the whole day until I forgot. So I'm gonna inhale, expand, exhale, take the arm, come forward, introduce a little bit of twist, not being in a rush, knowing that I'm adding another flavor of dynamic energy to my forward, but I'm staying forward, I'm lengthening my spine, I'm opening my chest, so I'm going forward in a forward bend, opening to the space around me, and then gently twisting a little bit both energies, both the inward and the outward in a forward bending, revolving twist, staying very mindful of what's inward. Let my breath replenish me and my exhalation extend me. And then Come back up to center. I'm telling you, the longer I do asana, 
the more I believe it's for the balance between inside and out. Not to prove what I can do out. Not to get lost in what's inward. But to combine both energies. So I'm sitting in here and honoring before I do Shavasana that there's both. There's an inward dimension of me and an outward dimension of me. And they're simultaneous. So I'm going to sit in alignment, in balance, in symmetry, opening and honoring the fact that I'm both. And without the inward, you're not resilient. Without the outward action, you're not resilient in the rest of your life. You always need both. So I'm just taking a couple of breaths, honoring what I am. Good. And then release and prepare for Shavasana. So for me, I'm going to lift up and get that length back in my lower abdomen. I'm going to sit back, let the chair support me. I'm going to find a place where I can have my hands open. I think my palms, I like them receiving more. But I can join my thumbs if I can. However you can feel more your hand movement, hand placement and arm placement do. Even if you can tip, even if you're like the wheelchair can tip it back, that's great. But here, as I go inward in Shavasana, Shavasana, relaxation, goes inward to touch way outward. It is a pose from inside to out. Softener on the temples, a job the inside of the mouth. Your body, the boundaries, the inside, the space in the room around you. All the way out, way out there. They're combined. I'm honoring it in Shavasana. Feel your breath. Don't change it. Thank your body. Practice gratitude from inside to out this week. Don't just be grateful for things. Be with the things. Start to bring yourself back Slightly deeper inhalation, slightly longer exhalation. When you're ready, open your eyes.
you know, the thing is about having a body and a mind and a body and whatever and whatever and everything else. It's so simple and it's so complicated at the same time. Right. Stay with the simple. And then the complexity won't overwhelm you. Right. Stay near where you are most connected. Right here. Watch the world do what it does. Right. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Gratitude Thanksgiving. to the mind body sensation. Namaste. Spirit in me, Namaste. Namaste. Spirit in you. Yep.